Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and I am here with Pinky Boo. Hello. Pinky Boo is here and we're going to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's, the FNAF movie. Uh, we've seen it. We went to go see it yesterday and we're going to give some thoughts on that. But mostly we're going to talk about, I think, the box office because this thing is making like ridiculous money. As it should be. There you yeah. go. As it should be. Audiences love it. Uh, this is after it took a, a critical drumming from uh, all yeah, the no, all the that's salty. Pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Twenty five percent. A lot of people were calling it the worst movie of the year. It was I not. I don't the, think it deserves that. No. Was it the best movie? No. But it wasn't the worst movie ever. And I think there's some other stuff going on here. So we'll we'll talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Do you want to give a woohoo? I don't do woohoos. She doesn't do woohoos. So I, we're not... I'm a separate person. I am not. Jesus I know. Well, I didn't know if I'm you sorry. wanted to step into the woohoo. Yeah, no, every time it's offered, I, I don't do the woohoos. Could you do like a something else? Could you do like a yes or something? No. Oh, God. That, that's too bad. No, well, I would gonna... do it like a yippee, but I can't right now because my voice is messed up. Okay. I'm sick. So no. she's going to phone in the yippee. Uh, yippee. So... There you go, yippee. Yippee. Uh, all right, so Five Nights at Freddy's, it came out uh, yesterday and it made a ton of money. And this is after critics slammed this movie. Now, I think I think there's something else going on here because having watched the movie, having had the lowest possible expectations for the movie, um, I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. I think there is something else going on here since we have such a, a uh, you know discrepancy between the audience and the critical score, I think some people might be angry because they don't want to put money into Scott Cawthon's coffers. That's my personal, like, do you know the Scott Cawthon controversy? Um, I think vaguely, I, I don't, okay. When the Scott Cawthon controversy happened, I wasn't in the FNAF fandom anymore. I was now like, focusing on other things like the real world no i'm not that great <laughs> no i was i was focusing on different different video games targeted towards children okay okay so well yeah. the the long and short of it is is scott cotton made the cardinal sin of being a conservative and donating to republican candidates and apparently there was a beef with his fans and vivzy pops fans and oh. there was doxing involved and it ended with him pretty much walking away from Five Nights at Freddy's, but he still gets paid. It's kind of like J.K. Rowling. She still gets paid. It doesn't matter if you like her or not. If you buy anything, uh, Harry Potter, she she gets paid regardless of what you think about her her personal opinions on things. Same with Scott Cawthon. He still gets yeah. paid. And he was given like producer credit and screenwriter credit and all that in this movie. That's what I think. That's what I think is potentially going on on some level. And some people just didn't get it because they're like, why is this guy just sitting in a chair looking at screens? I'm like, you've never played the games. That's what you Yeah. Do. Even if you have played the games, I feel like, I feel like this movie was basically, or like definitely like you had to be there when it was popular. You like had to have like a, a basic understanding of the lore. Yeah. Or whatever to understand it. Cause like you've played the games with me before on yeah, the channel. Yeah. Um, but like you didn't understand some of the stuff. So yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Cause I, I had on the way back from the theater, pinky boo explained, uh, as briefly as she could, the entire backstory of FNAF. Man, and I was brief with it. I ignored several fan theories, um, and condensed all seven games because yes, I did include security breach at the end there. Although I don't really, sorry. Well, I think I, I think they're going seven to seven games into twenty minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're going to based on uh, characters that appeared in in this movie. I think yeah. that security breach is definitely going to yeah. be considered canon. There were some changes made. Um, we'll talk about that, but let's talk about the box office first. So, regardless, critics slammed this thing. They said it was still going to make sixty five to eighty five million dollars. I think it's going to do better than that because it did almost forty million dollars on opening day. That's more than Mario. It did more than Mario. This has been like one of the most, okay, compared, like, sorry. I think this movie has been the most hyped movie compared to like Into the Spider-Verse and Barbie. And it's it's been very popular. 
Yeah, it's definitely an event movie and and it's been like what, 8 years in the making or something like that. But beyond yeah. that, like it was a cheap movie to make. I heard the budget for this thing was only $25 million. Really? $25 million. And they probably spent most of that on the animatron or on the costumes, on the animatronics. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, there are just a couple of sets and a couple of actors. None of them are like huge, huge, no offense to the actors, but none of them are like huge names. Right. Mm. So yeah. I guess so. But um, I would like to point out that, you know, the, the game does just take place in an office for five days. Yeah. Or yeah. nights technically. So I, it's not that surprising that there aren't many sets. Yeah, my my only disappointment is Nicolas Cage did not show up. I wanted I wanted Nicolas Cage to show up. If you've seen Willy's Wonderland, which is like the knockoff Freddy's movie, I love uh, Willy's Wonderland. Freaking God, I love that movie. It's so I schlocky. It. I love it. I, it's so good. It's I mean it's it's so bad it's good. So let, let's talk about the box office. This is coming from Collider. Five Nights at Freddy's scares up massive global box office debut despite lukewarm reviews. That this is lukewarm. 25%, that's pretty damn bad. Uh, that is freezer burnt. That is, yeah. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's has had a highly successful box office debut and is projected to earn around $130 million globally over the weekend, making it one of the biggest horror movie debuts ever. The movie has already earned $52.8 million at the global box office. It could beat the opening weekend of John Wick 4 and Fast X, and it already beat Mario's opening day. Do not underestimate the Five Nights at Freddy's stands. Yeah, there's a reason it's popular. There's a reason that they sell the toys at Walmart, right? With reported, there's a reason it's remained relevant after nine years. Yeah, it's so, which is shocking that everybody's still into Freddy's as much as they were like five or six or eight years ago. With a reported $39.5 million on Friday at the domestic box office, so just domestic, the movie is already on pace above fellow video game adaptation, the Super Mario Brothers movie, which premiered on the big screen earlier this year. Doesn't mean Freddy's will end up making more of an impact with ticket sales, especially given that it's on Peacock too. We went to the theater. It does prove that audiences are clearly interested in the tale about a haunted pizzeria. So yeah, they think it's going to earn 78 million at domestic. It might go higher than that, uh, to be honest, because I don't think I anybody it expected it to make $40 million on Friday domestic and i mean we don't know what's going to do internationally total because this is one that that does have international appeal i think because of it being like a youtube thing and it not really having any like like uh i guess cultural or geographic boundaries other than being like somewhat familiar with chuck e cheese that's basically all you need. like you know chuck e cheese yeah it's like that except the animatronics are haunted you know and Anyway, so yeah, it, it, it's doing really, really well. So we'll, uh, I guess we can talk a little bit about the movie itself now. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, who don't want spoilers, we already spoiled it. It's about haunted animatronics. And, uh, I think Chuck everyone Chuck. knows that Freddy's is about haunted animatronics unless they've been living on. Yeah, so the movie itself, I'm going to be honest, I had very, very low expectations for it. I'm like, this is going to be, this is not going to be good. And, yeah. uh, it, it wasn't, I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's not the best thing ever. And I'm a very casual, I'm, I'm casually familiar with FNAF through Pinky Boo and Squid King, but mostly me, yeah, mostly you. Um, but it's for, for somebody that's not like super invested in the games, even it is a coherent watchable movie, uh, with one really cringy part about two thirds of the way through. Yeah. But I think that that part is justified. Yeah, I think because it leads up to some horrific uh, ramifications later. Yeah. But but the movie itself was, it was watchable. It was serviceable. I, I the, A lot of the complaints about it, I didn't get. Mm -hmm. They're like, there's no plot. It's too slow. It's too, it's like, no, I actually thought it was pretty okay. And, um, you know, so I, I walked out of the theater. I didn't feel ripped off. I didn't feel like, like, what the hell did I do for the last two hours? Um, you know, it wasn't to me personally, it wasn't as enjoyable as Willie's Wonderland because Willie's Wonderland had Nicolas Cage and it was just rolling with it. It was like, yeah, this is a ridiculous premise. Let's just make this thing as ridiculous as possible. But this one kind of played it straight and it kind of worked. It wasn't that mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. 
So now as a FNAF fan, Pinky Boo, why don't you discuss your thoughts on the movie? Okay. Well, for starters, I definitely had, like, the bar was on the floor for me. Yeah. I was, when I heard it wasn't going to be, like, completely lore accurate, I kind of just assumed it was going to be completely different, which I'm very glad because it wasn't. However, as somebody who's basically just followed the games since, like, 2017, because I was kind of late to the, the FNAF thing, but... I do think it definitely takes after the books more. Yeah. I haven't read the books, but from what I've heard of the books, it definitely takes after the books more, I think. So if you haven't read the books, maybe read those so you can understand what's going on. It does kind of expect you to be in the know already, but at the end, it kind of like rushes an explanation, I guess, for people who are probably just taking their kids there. Um, there was a lot of references to the games and there was some references, um, that I saw like the, it's me in the mirror in the one part. And then the, um, and then Sparky's, which if you're a FNAF fan, you'll know about Sparky, the, um, hoaxed dog from you, the first game. Yeah. So the, the closest thing I can, I can think of to, to my generation was, um, they had uh, Sheng Long, which was a, a rumored Street Fighter character that you could unlock back in the day. And it's like he never actually existed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Sparky was basically a Photoshopped image. Um, And then there was a dog suit. It's kind of being debated if that was a reference to Sparky or this like dog animatronic in the books, which I thought was fun. Um, there was, There was a lot of references to the games, although... The slight differences are what really put me on edge, like the um, the Afton family not being the same as mm. it was before and people's names being changed. And I think they're kind of hinting at, like, Abby and and Mike and stuff being more like Emily and, you know... That family, like the family of the business partner of yeah. William Afton in the games and stuff, which, again, the movie very heavily focuses on, like, fans because they kind of expect you to already know if you're there. Yeah. So if you know nothing about FNAF, I don't think you'd like it. And that's also partially why I don't think critics liked it. Um, the The one part with the the cringy animatronics doing blanket forts. For yes. Sure. Yes. That, that was what I said about like that, that threw me like, okay, I was all into the movie and I'm like, okay, I'm like, oh my God, we've gone full Mac and me at this point. Yeah. Like this is just like really cringy. But I think people forget that even though the animatronics like kill people, they are still, you know, children, they're still children, technically. Um, so that's not that bad. And also, they were doing it so they could get a hold of Mike's little sister and make her into one of them. So there was reason behind it. It wasn't there just to be cringy, but I guess it was like also kind of a palate cleanser from people getting murdered. Yeah, I think I think that was it. It was kind of like... I was like, okay, now this is just kind of dippy and kind of, you know, and I, I was watching, I'm thinking like, this reminds me of like, like the second Ninja Turtles movie where it was just kind of like, okay, a bunch of puppets and everybody's acting like everything's like totally fine. Mike was like totally fine with it. He's like, oh yeah, there's just a bunch of killer puppets. Yeah, whatever. Let's yeah. Build a pillow fort. Yeah. Whatever. You know, that's cool. I can deal with it. Um, But uh, yeah, then it, they ramp up the horror after that. Now there's nothing like, super graphic in this. There's a little bit of blood and a person gets cho chomped in half. Was that the bite of 87? I don't know. This Was clearly takes place in the nineties though. Like the, the, it looks like early nineties, the hairstyles and everything. This is you know, yeah. definitely nobody's, you know, uh, well, I mean the first game does take place in the nineties. Yeah. Right, so. yeah. Yeah. So it it's, makes sense. yeah, the cars and the clothes and everything. So, um, I'm trying to think, do they have, Cell phone? I don't remember them. Anybody having cell phones in this one? Um, no, no. Max 
the the babysitter chick did. Okay. Well, well, she, well it was kind of more like a, I don't know, like, like a pager. Okay. So maybe it was, I'm trying to think because it, it seemed like the club, the clothes and the cars, definitely it, it was supposed to be the 1990s. Yeah, yeah, but we also have to remember this takes place after the restaurant got closed down, and yeah. I don't remember if the games actually took place after. But I um, I will admit I am pretty biased, but overall, it's definitely better than what I was expecting. Yeah. Are there things that I would have done differently? Yes, but I'm just glad we finally have a movie after almost a decade. Yeah, now they're talking, I mean, I, I can almost guarantee, given this thing only costs $25 million, and given how much money it's already made, it's already made back its budget, I, I think that there are going to be sequels. Um, I do think that they're eventually going to get into Security Breach, which which we played through. Yeah. Uh, based on one of the characters that's introduced, I'm like, oh, I know, I get that one. I know that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, because you played it with me. Yeah, I'm like, but- I get. I know who that is, but I'm like, whoa, she's way early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think they're going to lead up to, like, the, the Vanny thing, which also, game spoilers, um, but I just, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about the security breach thing, because for me, I feel like FNAF kind of ended at Pizzeria Simulator, and then security breach wasn't really necessary, I mean, it's a fun game, it's silly. It doesn't feel like the other FNAF games, though, and it doesn't really follow the same storyline. So I don't know how I, I feel about Security Breach. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if they'll FNAF go... FNAF-wise. Since they made a lot of money and since a lot of kids are going to see this, and this is a Blumhouse movie, for crying out loud, but I'm like... I thought like, it was going to be way more violent. I thought it was going to I thought it was going to be more violent, too. I really did. But it, it's kind of weird because it's like this weird, like... Because Henson did the costumes. You can tell this felt like something that Henson would have worked on. So I said like Ninja Turtles because they did the costumes for that and like Dark Crystal and Labyrinth where it was kind of that level of scariness, but it wasn't like over the top horror. It was more psychological, you know, but uh, I, I do, I do appreciate Nicolas Cage uh, actually busting animatronic heads in Willy's Wonderland and uh, mopping it up, drinking his soda and playing pinball. <laughs> you know, going on break. I love that. But no, I think it was okay. I what would you rate like what would you rate it out of 10? Out of 10, I think I would give it a solid 7. I am a huge Five Nights at Freddy's fan. I almost decorated my room to look like the office in the first game. Um but there are definitely things I would have changed. There, It's definitely not as violent as I was expecting, given the nature of the games. I, yeah. I thought there was going to be, you know, more there. Um, the cupcake was fun. A- apparently, well, the cupcake got more sc- Carl. Oh, Carl. The cupcake. Okay. Apparently, it got more screen time than Foxy did, which is really funny. Yeah, that was weird. That was very weird. Uh, Bloom Boy makes a surprise appearance. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Times. Okay. I don't know why Balloon Boy keeps making an appearance when um, when they didn't have the puppet, which I don't know if they're leading up to something with the, the marionette, but I feel like the marionette is way more important of a character than... The character that just steals your batteries. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're clearly uh, planning uh, sequels. They're clearly planning. See, I mean, they ended it at a place where if there never were any other movies, it would be fine, but it's open-ended enough that they can, they can do the sequels, but they're definitely going to lead up to security breach. And that's probably going to be the jump the shark moment. <laughs> you know. But I do, I do appreciate, I do appreciate the glam rock versions of those characters. That they're like the most eighties thing ever. All right, yeah. so we're going to wrap this up. I think we're going to wrap this up. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what the critics say anymore. I mean, this is another video game movie that uh, audiences loved. They're going to see it. It's not the worst thing ever. I personally, I'd give it a, I'd give it a six. I'd give it a six. It's, it's, it's watchable. It's rewatchable. I'd watch it again. I would. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.